the dragon. Is this one chained up too? Father, over there. Well, shit. <laughs> Let's get to it. Oh, didn't open the chest. Atreus, follow me. up? What the hell? Oh. Hello, Mama. How are you this afternoon? Doing all right? Sorry about three chain dragons in Midgar. The shrine must be related. There were three rooms on the pedestal. We've got to find the other two and free them. It does not concern us. I know, but it's what Mother would have wanted. And it just seems right. Guard your emotions, boy. Your enemies will not hesitate to use them against you. I actually had a great day. I'm done with work. Um, when I got home from work, um, uh, I don't know if you remember, but, uh, Sassy Ann and Beans, the two streamers that also helped me get to affiliate, um, Ann wasn't doing too well. She had a stressful day. So, right once I got home, I kind of hopped onto their stream to kind of like play with them a bit. So, race spirits. So I had a good day, uh, even at work. Um, Let's 
but no, it's um, it was a good day, and I'm glad I could help out a friend. It was also nice that um, my first streamer, which is Nergi, uh, he, he follows them now, so he actually came in too and, and raced with us as well. So it's nice to see some of my community kind of blending in with theirs as well. But I'm relaxing myself, not doing too much. Not doing too much. You know how it is on my streams. Do you want to talk? We can talk. Want to just relax? We can relax. I'm just doing side missions now. There's not much more to this game. Uh, I'm not strong enough to fight the final bosses yet, so I'm just taking my time. Hope your day was good too. Have you been all right? I know you've been doing with it with a new job. Um, has it been okay with you? Has the headaches been all awesome that you can manage even with it? Oh, okay. All right, fingers crossed, mama. But honestly, you're an amazing person. I think you got this. Not as bad. Has something changed? Is it is it really just taking care of yourself with water, or maybe is it that is is it working again? Like, do you think that maybe there's some personal stress that maybe is alleviating now, and you're feeling better? I'm just trying to figure out what's up so I can if we can continue so you can start getting and feeling better. That's why I've been such a big advocate for mental health. Not taking your meds and drinking water and maybe a little less stress. That's that's exactly what the the stress part is what I'm focusing on right now though. Just because I feel like that's an important part. Okay. Well, handle what you gotta handle, Mama. You're in my thoughts. You got this. I'm actually very happy for it, to see the progress that's happened. When when we first met and started interacting, it was it was an interesting thing. Is uh, I have seen you've been so exhausted at work. I've been passing out and sleeping a ton. See, that's probably what you need, though. I can like just example. Ever since I started my job, I've been feeling better. I've been getting more rest because I think the stress of not having a job just in my personal life was affecting me. So it, it even though work makes me tired, there's something about I don't know, I don't know, personally feeling like I'm working is bringing me more joy than not working. It's weird. But that's just me. It's not just a personal thing. But um I I've just been happy to see the progress you've made, mama. Honestly. Um uh, I, st I, when I'm at work, because one of the things I do like about my job is, um, what I do, I can put headphones in my ear, and sometimes I'll listen to music, but other times I actually go back to my streams and just, like, I like to assess the progress that I've done on my streams, because the affiliation thing is still so new to me and so raw, I like to remember where, what all the things that I've done up into it. So I go back to our streams quite often, and I love hearing, I know it's me talking, but, remembering the interactions I had with you it, it it reminds me of what you were going through and so it, it just makes me happy to see that you're still moving forward regardless so you know keep moving I'm, I'm so 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 happy for you 
And I know things may seem tough. I know things may seem a little bit stressful. But I'm very, very happy for you. I'm glad the glasses help. Like, I guess, like this, this is what I'm saying. Like, um, I'm thinking about all of that stuff. That that's why I re re listen to my streams because I. It reminds me of what was going on during that time. Because um. I think I guess like the the catalyst, for the like I I guess what I see as the catalyst of what really helped motivate you was when we talked about worry. That's just for me personally. Because um, we've had deep conversations even before that. But I don't know. I, I guess I felt like a spark had like clicked in you from that stream. And I've just been happy to see all the progress. I, it was also nice to... <laughs> oh, I'm oh, sorry. Thank you for reminding me. It's just I, I was looking at the screen, not my, not my phone chat. I got a water bottle this time. <laughs> but um, it was nice to... um. Uh, like after that conversation, you decided to stream, and then you're back. You're back in action stream. You know you got raided in hype train, and I was, I was just so happy to see all of that go on for you. I feel like I felt like you really needed that, and like I like work. But that's the thing, worrying doesn't really stop. It's more just you just learn how to manage it a bit more. It's almost like saying worrying has its place. I think I've learned to accept it a bit more because it's like it lets me it lets me become aware that there are things that need to be handled. You know, shit happens, and so worry may settle in, but it's it's basically how you move on from it and how you hand how you handle it. And I was just so happy to see what was going on. So that's why I have always been like in your back corner, just saying you got this, you got this, because I was so happy to see how the community came for you. I was so happy to see that I that. Um, I pl I was happy to see that I played a part in seeing you like revitalize, and I was so happy to see the progress. But I also know that it's also easy to kind of like fall back. It's really hard to keep going, especially when new things arrive. So I, that's why I'm just like trying to cheer you on. I know it's stressful. I know it's tar hot, tiring. I know it's like it's the world keeps on asking more and more of you. But I think you got this. You got a ton of people in your back corner. Your husband sounds like an amazing guy who wants the best for you. It meant a lot to me too. That that, like I said in that stream, um, it was different for me to be able to be open about those conversations. So the fact that I was able to verbalize them, it meant a lot to me too. that's the thing I know they're here for me and it's glad to have a community that backs me up it's nice it really is nice y'all made me cry in my first affiliate stream and it's because I was thinking about things like this so keep going mama you know how it is if I mean I'm be honest just because I'm uh, like I, I it's just how I operate I appreciate you stopping by in the stream but if you're tired Please rest. <laughs> Please, like I'll always be here. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. I ain't doing anything special. And I'm, I'm I even, uh, some of the people who watch my streams and that actually appeared in Beans and Ann stream, I told them, look, if you're having fun on Beans and Ann stream right now, just racing with them, stay there. I'm not doing much on my stream right now. I'm playing a game that I love, and I'm just going through the story mode at my pace. It's really supposed like this. It's been a while since I've gotten back to just chilling. So, um, uh, I'm not doing much. It may not be entertaining, and for the most part, I'm only talking to you because I feel like this is important right now and to encourage you and keep you going. It's important to me, so I feel like I got. I I feel obligated to do it. But for the most part, 
once I, once I start getting back to gaming, like, please rest up. Tomorrow, tomorrow is coming. So, you know, put your best foot forward and make yourself the best for tomorrow, regardless of what comes. That's, that's, that's just how I feel about it. So if you want, if you need to rest, rest. I ain't doing much. I ain't doing much special. I'm just chilling. Puzzle in the oh, I already did it. Ooh. <laughs> you do need it. Take advantage of them. <laughs> oh, and uh, just to let you know, um, sun this Sunday and this Monday, um, I may just do a two-hour stream at my normal normal time because I need to get into work at nine o'clock p.m. I'm gonna be doing a nine p.m. to a six a.m. shift to kind of get to kind of get my um job in order. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit wonky. It'll just be a two hour stream on Sunday and Monday. Just a heads up. But outside of that, I think I'll have Tuesday off just to kind of get my energy back and then I'll be going back to my morning work. I gotta do what I gotta do, but they're paying me a lot. So uh, I'm I'm just doing it. <laughs> I, I I just wanted to clarify with them if if I was gonna be doing my day job and then the night shift because I didn't want to work for like 14 hours. <laughs> but no, they're just they're just shifting my time. Just take care of yourself, mama. Well, you played a part in that as well. Boy, over here. Yes, sir. When I was talking to everybody on my streams and doing those therapy streams. Hmm. This is good to know. Yes, I can. When I was talking to everybody and um, doing those streams and sharing, I was talking to myself as well. I didn't even know there was treasure there. I haven't done a lot of meal prep, but I'm looking forward to my day off so I can so I can have a good breakfast again. It, it's just a change of habit at this point. I am eating healthier. It, it's it's just a change of habit currently. Is what I gotta do. I'm in that weird phase. Faith in their king? Even after 
after he got so many of them killed? It is a command to have faith despite his failures. Oh. Well, I'm a dum dum. <laughs> that was a symbol. Okay. Do I have to go in there to free the dragon? to kill it. Good point. I'll be ready. <laughs> we'll see. Nothing else. Hello, redundant. How art thou this evening? Are we a better person today than we are yesterday? I know you've been stressed with the whole COVID and the kids thing, so I hope you're doing all right. I'm not trying to even bring it up to really put you down in the dumps, honestly. Just making sure you're okay. Right. We never had before that. That's her father. And all the animals she knew. He taught her well. In the last family. Her father again. Both of them. I'm assuming you're typing at the moment, so I'm gonna let you finish still it. Still there. It's quite a story. But I, I read it. That is so far what I'm reading. I'm I am I'm 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 baffled right now. <laughs> Digital, how you doing? You feeling better from the COVID? is just tiring but for the most part I'm positive and still moving on Ooh, 
You know how it be, man. New day, new tomorrow. Just keep on moving on. But for the most part, I've already finished the story of this game, so I'm just dicking around, doing side missions, and just chilling, letting the day wire, uh, peter off. You feeling better? I've never caught it, nor have I ever, ever actually met anybody who had it. So I don't really know on a personal level how it's like. Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome to the club, redundant. <laughs> <laughs> on those worthy, on those worthy. <laughs> Why does everybody in the Phoenix Empire react that way? <laughs> the instant I give any power to any person on my stream, it's always, I feel so influential. <laughs> the power's coursing through my veins. <laughs> that scene where Thanos puts the last stone in the Infinity Gauntlet and he's just like, yeah! <laughs> Did we just say that at the same time? Or are you just that quick at typing? <laughs> With the power of the infinity band, I am inevitable. <laughs> But, um, uh, as for what's going on redundant with your familia, is everything okay? It got cut off personally for me. I didn't see the rest of the chat. Oh, okay. I see it now. I, I, I got cut. It didn't, it didn't show all of it on the TV, but I'm looking back at it. If someone's okay with the cops, words really be fucked with my head. Were the cops mean? Like, unnecessarily mean? Cause that, 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 that bothers me personally. Just a tad bit. Irresponsible and neglectful because your son snuck out of the window in the middle of the night? Like, honestly, that's just... That's not irresponsible, that's just caught off guard. I, I, I assume that doesn't happen often, correct? Like, if it... <laughs> Here's what I have to say to that. Just because even even I can pull pull apart the bullshit. Oh. Uh. Fucking spitters. 
Hold on. Okay, I'm gonna pause it so I can just t address what happened. All that, so like, so put it this way, redundant, all right? You had your headphones in, you were doing laundry, everything was Gucci in the neighborhood. You finally come to the door, the cops are being bitches because they're calling you irresponsible for just being a normal human being. I'm, I'm almost positive based off, your, uh, based off of your character, you're, that, you're not that neglectful. Especially because of who your family is and the level of attention and care you actually have to put into your family. So you were caught off guard in a moment of weakness because what your normal day routine is like was finally changed just a bit. And it was enough where something where one situation led to another and it involved the cops. But it's not because it was that extreme. The cops were called because they're cops were called because they have to handle a situation like that. But it does not dictate who you are. A normal day for you just changed a bit. And whatever these fucking cops had to say has no validation on who you are or what you normally do. Do not let it change your day. Do not let it fuck up your mind. They're not a part of your daily life. They don't know shit about you. Okay? You pay them with your tax dollars to protect and serve. So they can fuck right off if they ain't gonna serve. They got no right to criticize. All right. So do yourself a favor, brush yourself off. They said some hurtful shit, but it don't mean a damn thing about who you are. All right. Of the plenty of of the many of parents out there who were parents way too young or very or way too irresponsible, you sure as hell are not one of them. <laughs> okay, they can fuck right off. <laughs> I got fucking spitters. Oh, and you don't have to take that as a word of encouragement. You can take that as a word of fucking fact, okay? <laughs> No problem. I have a big ish. Okay, so like the way I grew up, and I don't know why, when I was growing up as a kid, a lot of people used to call me a liar. And it used to bug the hell out of me. Because I'm actually a very honest person. And it surprises a lot of people on how honest I am. But I found that I was such an honest person, it was bizarre, and people saw people thought of me as a liar because of my honesty so it used to bug me a lot when people would say false shit about me he, he that that'll happen I get that I get it I get it but what I'm saying is you just need to it, it's it's a little difficult to do and I get it but what he said regardless if he got under your skin or not was bullshit if what you're telling me is what he said, it's bullshit. It's not who you are. I have a personal problem when people tell me something that I'm not. I do. It, it, it aggravates the hell out of me because I know who I am. You ain't going to tell me that I'm a liar. Like I, uh, One of the things I used to hate is um, my stepdad used to call me lazy. He used to call me lazy. And in some categories, I was, but I was a 4.0 student. I, and I, I was a 4.0 student in honors classes. Um, I used to be called lazy because um, I used to spend just a little bit more than an hour with video games. I spent 90% of my day with academics, chores, and all this stuff. But the instant I spent just a little bit longer playing video games for my own personal time, I was considered lazy. And it used to piss the hell out of me. Because I knew I wasn't lazy. Only problem is, is that I lived under the, his household, so I didn't say much back, even though it aggravated me. So one thing that bugs the hell out of me is when somebody says something about you that is genuinely not fucking true. I'm sorry that a cop told you that, but I don't care if he has a badge. I don't care if he's the president of the fucking United States. If something's not true about you, fuck him. Don't hold on to that. Don't let it destroy you. I'm, I'm, I'm just being genuine. You're not a neglectful parent. 
he has no right to say that shit about you. He does not live in your daily life. And the little little bit of time that I've known you and the stuff that you've gone through, you are actually the opposite of that. There's plenty of people out here who are way more neglectful, who don't give a damn, and I don't see the cop doing anything about their families. No, he's picking that day to bully you because he can, because he has a badge. Fuck him. I would have taken it. Like, honestly, I would have taken his badge number. I would have been like, yo, excuse me? I'm over here doing laundry and listening to music and doing more for my family, and you just catch me in a moment of weakness because it's not every day that my child hops out the window into my neighbor's yard. Like, I'm gonna be honest. Do you, does the cop does that cop often go to your house? Do you know the cop by name? Redundant. Is he a frequent visitor? No. It was a once in a blue moon situation and this bitch has the audacity to call this stuff out that's my point this is the first time ever so he can fuck right off because there ain't no fact in anything that he said whether he believes it was true or not fuck him he doesn't know shit about you like I said I don't give a damn if he's the president of the United States or a cop I'm tired of people fucking using their authority to be like that that's bullshit. Don't let it bring you down. I know you're in a rough patch. I know it was probably a mental health day. I, I, uh, uh, um, I'm assuming it affected your stream. Whether, I don't know if you streamed or not or if you cut it off because of what went on. I, I've, been, I've been in my own world with work. But I, I can under, like, I'd understand if it fucked up all that scenario too. So like it, him, him getting under your skin kind of ruined a flow that you were in. No, don't give him don't give him that energy. Don't give him don't give him your joy. Don't give him the time of day. Once in a blue moon situation, you're aware of it now, so now we just take a few steps to make sure your child doesn't make a frequent habit of climbing out the fucking window. Like cover your bases, do what you need to do so that this stuff doesn't happen again, but that officer can fuck right off. It's as simple as that. That that aggravates me thinks he thinks he knows fact what 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 un, under under what circumstance does the, the, the in that scenario at all with him being a first visit to your house does he know a damn thing about the situation it sounds like to me he wants to he wants to go um from being a, a regular cop to a detective but not with that fucking attitude because he can't figure shit out <laughs> he sounds like a dumbass to me, and I, like, I, I don't give a damn if he has a badge. I don't care if he's the president. He can fuck right off. So, no, 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 goddamn word of encouragement for you, redundant. Word of fact, okay? Go by fact. <laughs> he doesn't know shit about you. Boy. Sir. The Dwarf King made his subjects hunt dragons and other monsters for him? Some king, huh? I'm gonna go back to hacking and slashing. I gotta get some of this pent up aggression uh, out. Father, you may want to see this. Looks like that lever over there will free him. I do. I do understand. I don't know if you can tell from the inflection of my voice, but um, like I said, what 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 I guess what gets me angry, like like really like go, what what makes me go from zero to a hundred real quick, is when stuff is said about me isn't true. So I do understand. I get why you feel things heavily. I may not feel it to the emotions that to the emotional level that you feel or the mental level that you feel because I'm not, I'm not I don't really deal with anxieties. I'm not I don't need medication to get through my day. But I can relate to the situation in general because those types of situations heighten me naturally. So I do get it redundant. I may not understand it to the level intensity that you're in, which is why I said that 
it it it'll probably be in your best interest to just draw yourself away from the situation. I you're probably what the way I see it right now based on how you're coming to me I feel like you've been hearing this dude's voice just cycle over and over again in your head and the fact that he has a badge just kind of like intensified it a bit and I understand what it's like when something's just you know on like a fucking repeat in your mind and it feels like it intensifies a bit and even if the intensity doesn't increase it's just on a completely cycle so it becomes kind of in insane almost and then it just draws you down more and more well just fucking take a guillotine to that shit right now if you can because the first thing you need to understand is none of that shit he said about you is true. Simple as that. So, I understand how you feel. Do what you can just to breathe. Do what you can just to reset yourself. It was a fucked up scenario. It was a fucked up night. Just accept that for what it was. But the cop himself did not do his job the way he should have. And I've known cops personally. I've known cops that are part of communities. I've known cops that um, even when they've made mistakes similar to that, go about their way to correct them. And that dude sounds like an asshole. All right. I don't. I don't. And I'm. I'm. I may set beyond repeat, but you gotta cut that out right now. If you if you want to help yourself, if you want to start feeling better, that cycle of what that asshole said to you. I can't even address him as a cop anymore. That's how pissed off I am about it. It needs to chop. It needs to be chopped off. Do not recycle that shit in your mind. Do what you gotta do. Do what you can. If you're gonna do your stream, you know, erase that, or or share it. Voice it out to other people. Do anything, but let but do anything that you gotta do except give that man power to his words. Because there's no power to what he said. It's bullshit. Do whatever you have to do to reset yourself that. Because that's the first part to getting over that. Is just accepting the fact that what he said was bullshit. And the rest will fall. That's the that's how I see the that's how I see the best healing for you, honestly, in terms of this situation. Because all the emotions and stuff like that that's tied to it is because of that cop. Uh, we we know what the beginning of this was. So go straight to the beginning. The beginning was him. So you know what? Fuck him. <laughs> That's how I see it. Cut that shit off. Do not give it any more fucking energy. Attack. I know, but it feels wrong to keep something caged like this. Your emotions again, boy. You can't hear their thoughts. I can. Ignore them and ready yourself. Okay. <laughs> No problem, redundant. No problem at all. I get it. I honestly do. And it, I, I'm glad I'm playing God of War. Honestly, I get, I, I get to get some aggression now. Cause I'm pissed. I'm pissed for you. You're upset, but I'm pissed. <laughs> And I'm pissed because it's like if it was just some fucking Joe Schmo down the street, no energy to that. I deal with bo I deal with assholes throughout the whole day. I think I even mentioned on one of my prior streams I got yelled at by a customer, and because I'm so used to assholes being in this world, I literally didn't respond to her at all. And she came off s like such an asshole. She caught herself being an asshole, and she apologized for it. That's how that's how easy it is for me to deal with people in this world. I'm I'm used to dealing with assholes. What pisses me off is he was a cop and he used his authority to be an asshole. That's what pissed me off. So I'm sorry that you feel sad, but I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm, I, and I, I use laughter because anger is not healthy or conducive to my health. So I like to laugh my problems away. I will get sleep tonight. You are in my thoughts tonight. But I'm just saying, the situation has me a little bit riled up. <laughs> Be ready. Shit. Hey, 
mama. Did you catch a bit of that? You got any encouraging words for uh, redundant at all? Or you just wanted to let me rant a bit? <laughs> Quinoa chicken and gravy. Oh, that's what you made for food? Ooh. Ah, I might die. I'm just burning. Oh, so you missed it all. I don't know if... Um... I'll leave it up to you, Redundant. Honestly, I'm in the mode where I just want you to move on and heal. Some, some, I don't know if you can go back in the chat and read it yourself, Mama, or not. I don't know what you have access to. Access to. Um, I don't, I don't, it's up to Redundant if she wants to say it again. I'm more in the mode right now where I just want her to move on from it. But, uh, uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm kind of pissed off at what she had to go through. But, uh, it, 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 it it's, I, it's a righteous anger from me. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, since she's since she's bringing it out, while you read that up, um. The main thing that stuck with her was the fact that the cop called her irresponsible. And what I had gone through is I had told Redundant that she is in no sense uh, irresponsible. Knowing who Redundant is and what she has to go through on a daily basis with taking care of her family, specifically her children, she is actually the opposite of irresponsible. But this cop decided to take it upon himself to be like she's not taking care of her kids just out of the blue and for me personally I don't like it when cops do that when they start flashing their badge and their authority and acting like they have the right to say this bullshit no I don't give I don't care if you're the president I don't care if you're a cop fuck you I I, I asked redundant this uh, just a simple question if this was a if this was a recurring theme and she said this is the first time that that's ever happened so I'm just trying to encourage her that, you know, what? because uh, what stuck with her was the words that the cops said. And I'm like, that's just straight up bullshit. It's just straight up bullshit. Ignore the fact that he's a cop. You gonna let some random guy come up to you and call you responsible and this is the first time he met you? He doesn't know jack shit about your life? He doesn't know what you go through on a daily basis? That motherfucker needs to do a goddamn 180 off my fucking property. That's how I see it. So I, it was just a righteous anger on my end. That's because I, I, I don't like it when people start uh, claiming things over you that's not even true. It'd be, it'd be one thing if there was a level of irresponsibility from uh, Redundant. But I, I never have seen that. I've seen I, Redundant talks about her kids in her stream. And the stuff she talks about, it almost sounds joyous that she's there. she's able to be in her children's life and actually take care of them. You don't see that in parents. Hell, sometimes you don't even see that in good parents. Smash skunk on her dust. God. God damn. I'm a firm believer that not all cops are bad, but the bad cops outweigh the good cops in my opinion. I've come across good cops and I love them. It's just they're in short supply. <laughs> and that that's why I've been trying to help redundant. That's why I've been like this is exactly why. 
because it's not it's just not true i know you feel things on a different level redundant but like i said i feel like the most important part to deal with is the fact that it's just not fucking true that's why i mean by short supply as well mama because for me it's it, i can count on my on one hand how many good cops i've come across one was a school officer god damn Short supply. Ah, oh, damn it. Fine. Yo, oh, he got me again, damn. Let's try this again. Some good cops right there. You just don't see it often. I wish you. I wish you could. But no. Redundant. Breathe. Do what you gotta do. I appreciate that you're sharing it with people. Like I. Like I. I everybody is different. So with people who seclude themselves, I'm a person who used to seclude himself when it came to to my problems. There's nothing wrong, in my opinion, with secluding yourself if you're a person who it does better going off on their own to heal. Because that's what I do. I'm very good at healing myself when I go off on my own. The problem is that I used to be too good at it that it would get to a point where I would get lost with my thoughts and they would end up destroying me more than actually helping me. So with every different person I come across, I say handle it the way that you feel you need to handle it. But I also encourage the fact that you are, and I'm appreciative of the fact that you're sharing this. It's one thing to share it with me. Like, you're on my stream, and this is what I, this is kind of like what I do. Like, you're, you're more than welcome to share it here. But, like I said, I gave you a moment to share it with Mama Toast because she missed it. And I didn't want you to bring it back up if it would arise something, because everybody is different. But I actually am quite proud, and I have a big respect that you are still willing to share it, even though the situation is still raw. Um. Yep, exactly. These, the, the, you're part of a great community that has a lot of people who will listen to you. Uh, that's why I'm glad I'm a part of the Phoenix Empire too, because Mama has helped me with stuff that I've gone through too. And so you know, hurt you. Like we. One addressing you redundant. Um, like I said, I'm glad you're sharing it because, I, like, it is it is helping you to de deal with it better. And I'm glad that you have included me in that, so I can help you feel better. But to address mom as well, mama as well, um, the part of secluding yourself. Uh, that's that that's what I'm saying. It's like for everybody, it's different. So I just wanted you to handle it the way you want to handle it. I'm not going to, I don't want to be a guy who forces on you, like, redundant, tell mama toast or something like that. No, if you don't feel comfortable to do it, don't do it. Handle it the way you want to handle it. So I'm, I'm actually happy that you are sharing it. Heal yourself. I honestly need you, I need you to heal yourself from this because it bothers me that the cop did that. <laughs> so, like, I, I'm like, I, I'll, I'll be better tonight if redundant can go to bed tonight. Just okay. I'm not saying we gotta hit 100% by the end of the night. That'd be amazing if we could. And I would love that, 100%. But, it's better. <laughs> when it, if it makes it, okay. Women talk about the miscarriages sometimes, it kills them. It makes it easier to move on. Yeah. Well, we do that all here. I personally can't have a miscarriage, but if this is a space that you feel like you need to be open and talk about it, I'll try to understand the situation as best as I can, but this is the place that we can do it. So, you know, just be alright, Redundant. You're in a safe place here. I'm happy that you were willing to share it with me. I'm glad Mama could chime in and give you some encouragement as well. 
you know, just keep moving forward. That too. Ain't nothing like a good close friend that you can have that just listens to you. Look at you. So everything's gonna be alright, redundant. Everything's gonna be alright. You got all the stuff that you need right now. Yup. Hey, you're right about that. Could have been. I don't even want to talk about how it could have been. I'm glad it wasn't. And I'm glad it, it didn't get there. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just. In a sense. In a sense, I'm kind of glad it went the way it did. Just because it could have gone worse and it didn't. But. I just, I don't want to talk about what it, what could have been because it didn't happen. Like I said, we're, we'll just, as a parent, I would say, I, the only thing I can say is that I advise you to just take the step so it doesn't happen again. Like, I, I'm, I don't think I'd be a good, a good friend if I didn't tell you that part. However, it didn't get worse. If we take the steps to do what we got to do so it doesn't happen again, it will never be worse. So let's not go there. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Th there we go. But there we go. I'm, I got, I'm just saying, let's just like handle what you gotta handle, and just move on. Don't even like, don't. I know it's, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Given, I know it's hard for them because you have anxieties. They can flare up. I get that part. I've been around a, a ton of people who have anxieties, and I mean, hell, my ex had anxieties. So like, I, I, I was, I was frequent around people like that, and I understand how flare-ups can be, and how it's hard to kind of pull yourself away from that. So take it step by step. But you've taken the steps you've done to ensure your family is safe. I want you to address the part where you realize that the cop and what he said was bullshit for your own health and your own well-being. And then we just move on. Don't give any energy to what could have been. Because you know what? It didn't happen. And you've already taken a step, so what could have been will not happen. Appreciate what did happen. So, like, you know, all right, now this is an issue. It's been addressed. Stop the toilet because... It's... <laughs> <sighs> take care of yourself okay I mean I was even telling mama I said I'm not doing much on this stream I'm just sticking to my schedule and entertaining people and providing a place for people to talk if they want to talk but I'm more for personal health see uh, she, I literally told mama she said she was going to get something to eat and then she might rest later and like I'm be honest if this becomes a zero viewer stream I do not give a fuck Personal health first. You haven't slept in 24 hours? You know what? This is what I'm talking about. I know it's hard, but part of that was giving energy to things that did not happen and giving energy to the things that the cops said that are not even valid. What he said is bullshit, and what could have happened didn't happen, so don't give any energy to what, what could have been. Especially because you've already taken the precautions to prevent any future incidents. So what could have been will not be. It's as simple as that. And I'm saying these hard facts so you have something to anchor to. I know it's a mental battle, but I want you to have something to anchor to. Ground yourself. So Yeah, exactly. Get some rest. Drink water. Breathe. you got a support group. You have people in your back corner. I mean, I know it's for redundant. The encouragement. I see it's highlighted, but uh, <laughs> I'm getting rest. I'm drinking water. I'm breathing. But I know it's for redundant. Redundant is the topic of discussion right now. <laughs> 
<laughs> Highlight the message all you want. It's, it's fine. I'm, I, I get it. But you gotta support group redundant. It did. Like I said, I, I'm aggravated while you're upset, but it's it's okay. Exactly. What he said was bullshit. It has no valid. It has. There's no fucking truth in what he said. I'm gonna beat up this big ass ogre in the meantime. improving. You fought well, Atreus. Thank you, Father. I'll be honest, um... Do you have a therapy section on your, um, Discord, um, redundant? Because I know Mama has one. She has a self-care... One of the things I realized, and one of the, it, 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 it dictated why I decided to do a therapy stream. I could have gone straight gaming. I could have just stuck with that. But I used to be uh, quiet about my issues, and it wasn't until my sister appeared in my life and saved me from a lot of the traumas I was going on through. Um, anonymous submissions, exactly. But, um, uh, I, um, it wasn't until my sister appeared in my life and saved me from my issues I realized that venting this stuff out is very important. It's crazy how traumas can have a real serious toll on who you are. And it really does deteriorate your health. I feel a lot better ever since I've been able to vent this stuff out. So, yeah, I, I highly suggest making a therapy, se uh, therapy section on your Discord. But, I mean, join as many as you can. I haven't really needed it lately because I haven't had any personal issues. And I've met so many good people that, and I've gone through so much that when I go through my troubles now, it doesn't, I don't really get bogged down like I used to be. I mean, honestly, I really wasn't a functioning human being the way I used to be. Uh, it used to be like small things that would just hit me, like, like kick me straight into a deep depression sometimes. And um, I'm not that same person anymore, and I can proudly say that. But uh, vent this stuff out. I really hope what Mama and I were to be able to, were saying right now could have uh, helped you. Because I, I am I am really pissed about the um, the abuse of authority that 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 air quote officer used. I don't even like I don't even like addressing him as a cop. Because it was bullshit. You can't internalize this stuff. I really don't believe internalizing this stuff is healthy for people.
to address what you said about being ashamed or being told to suck it up, for me it was a little bit different. You mentally abused your childhood home for years, so got layers of trauma. It's copying oh, I see, so that is very reasonable. I see it now. I see it now. I see it. Well, let it out, redundant. Let it out for yourself. And I'm saying that because um, one of the common things that kind of prevents people from healing is when they become self-aware of what triggers their uh, traumas at times, but they don't they don't really take steps to uh, uh, accept them in a sense because that officer like I get why uh, of a police force can trigger some of those traumas related to your dad uh, and it's hard it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to separate those things like I said I don't have personal anxieties that would make me really trapped in that mental cycle so I understand how it's a little bit more difficult for you but there is a beauty in understanding that even though you have those traumas what I like is that you can voice them. What I like is that you can see them. So like you are you're aware of what triggered you. So kind of flip that around to help yourself. It's going to be hard, but it has to take an understanding of that. Yes, this is what triggered me. And yes, it's because of my issues with my dad. Maybe not so much about what the cop is, cop was or what he said. But now we've now we've hit hit the root that it's not that it was just a cop. It's not that he just said those uh, invalidating things about you. It's more because of the deep-rooted trauma that you have and how that tied down, that is bogging you down. And just begin to release that stuff out. Just release it. It's, it's a weird acceptance that has to take place where it's like, yes, yes, this is, I see it now. I see what's going on. <laughs> it, they 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 yeah unfortunately unfortunately I'm gonna have to agree with that as well um but just for your sake just Uh, it's it's a hard it's a hard topic to deep dig deep down on. I think my closest I think my closest example and it, it's because it took place with my ex um when I was dating my ex uh there was a time where um I think I had a little bit of attachment issues with my ex they weren't anything serious um I looking back at it I realized that um it, it I was in an abusive relationship with my ex so even though I had issues, she flared them up more than what they actually were. I needed to do with my, I had to deal with my personal issues, but it wasn't anything too drastic. They could be dealt with. It wasn't, it didn't have to be something relationship ending. I think more my ex was nitpicking for things to hate about me or something like that. What, whatever, because like I said, eventually she did cheat on me. So it is what it is. But what I did while I was dating my ex is I actually, uh, I don't know if you know Redundant, but I um, I, I guillotined my relationship with my mother when I, uh, I got kicked out by my stepdad and my mom. Uh, we just couldn't agree on uh, living styles, so I got kicked out. And uh, I cut off my relationship with my mom for three years. I absolutely hated what went down, and I just, I just left that scenario. I said, like, I don't want anything to do with it. So when it comes, like, I guess it's easier for me and Mama knows this to cut off people who don't mean anything to me because I was able to cut off my own mother. But I realized that there were some traumas that my mom put me through that were affecting my, were affecting how I wanted to operate in the relationship I was trying to develop with my girlfriend at the time. So I took it upon myself to try and face those traumas and talk to my mom about the things that she put me through to release off into the air. I, 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 tried, I tried to face my past 
because I realized that it was a it was it was a bad anchor in my life. There, there's things that you should tie yourself down to to kind of affirm who you are, and there are things that hold us down that we need to let go of. And so I finally called up my mom and told her, "Hey, look, I want to talk to you because I feel like there's some things that are affecting my growth as a, as an individual, and I just want to address them." So. You have to cut toxic people out of your house. Trauma is a big deal. If you can't do it, if you, hold on. If you can't deal with the person who caused it, to talk to a therapist. Yeah, but I've never, I've never had access to a therapist. So uh, it's, it's been an interesting journey being on myself. I think my therapist was my sister. But um, I eventually talked to my mother and just. Just an example of kind of the traumas I went through, and it probably explains why, because I don't know if you stuck around redundant for what I said on stream yesterday, but I told people in my stream that I'm not a big dater. I, I, uh, the ex I broke with, up with was my first, but it was five years of a, of a friendship before I actually started dating her. I'm not a big dater. I like to get to know a person. Um, uh, and I, I connect more with who they are as a person more than anything. But one of the things that my mother uh, put me through uh, is um, my mom projected her traumas onto me. And I feel like the reason why I'm not a big dater is because I've always had this taboo of respecting women that I became uh, uh, an over-respecter of women. One of the things that happened one time is uh, my mother, uh, when I had just turned 18... I, uh, we were at church, and I used to uh, go upstairs to the, um, I'm just going to call it, we called it the purple room because it, the walls were painted purple, but uh, it, was the, it was the children's church room, you know, the kid room. But the church I went to was a close-knit church. The kids I hung out with were like siblings. But the instant I turned 18, you know, don't be around kids. You're an adult now. That 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 that's pedophilic. But that's not who I am. And it was never a thought that crossed my mind. But because of some stuff my mom had gone through when she was younger, she projected that trauma onto me and fucked up my life because all of a sudden I'm 18 and all of a sudden I'm a dude who's just going to try and, and try and uh 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 do uh pedophilic things with kids? No. That's not who I am. So there was a time, and part of the reason why I had that phone call with my mother is because I was still harboring that stuff on me. And it kind of bled out into my relationship with my ex. Because, um, just to kind of tie it in, uh, uh, I was very, uh, I guess, afraid that she would leave me if I, uh, 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 if I came off too strong in some situations because my mom had made me so sheltered that I didn't know what what were proper levels but in my defense it was my first relationship and then also um, like I said my ex kinda played with me a bit and made those situations that weren't so big uh, into something more than what they actually be, could be after talking to my mother I felt fine we didn't have a pleasant conversation for other reasons, but uh, uh, being able to get some of those things out and just let it go and leave that bullshit with my mother instead of letting it affect me in my life helped me. So to tie it into you, Redundant, in regards to you being traumatized by this cop, the issue isn't the cop at that point. We've found what the root issue is. So surface level, what the cop said was bullshit. The cop has no authority to use that power, but it is what it is. The deep-rooted issue is the traumas that are affecting you, the traumas that are, are being harbored and stir stored up in you because of what your dad put you through. And those deep-rooted traumas are definitely different for everybody. Me, I hate feeling weak, which is why I called my mom. When I felt like, you know, hey... I'm letting traumas get the best of me. Like I can't be a normal human being anymore because I'm letting bullshit affect my life. That angered me. 
So in my anger, I did what I felt was right, what was what I should do, which I didn't want to do. But I didn't. I hated the feeling of being weak more than uh, avoiding my mother. So I called my mom. That's what I did. I don't know a direct way for you to deal with those deep rooted traumas. I know it's a time thing, definitely. Like I said, I didn't talk to my mom for three years. I definitely took time to try and heal. But we've we've established what the main thing is. We've established what the huge trigger was. And for your own peace, for you to go on in what you're doing, for you to go on as a as a mother, to go on as a wife, to go on just as redundant alone, you're going to need some self-healing with those those deep-rooted dad traumas. I personally don't know how to address them, but the best part and the thing that I feel like is the hugest part of it is is addressing them, realizing that that is what triggered you. Because like I said, a lot of people um, uh, can't find those triggers, or if they do, they don't really address them. They could say, yeah, they, they go about it like, yeah, this triggered me. And then like a week later, it triggers them again. And then a week later, it triggers them again. Or maybe an hour later, it triggers them again. To actually heal from that is to be like, is to really take that, that step back and be like, damn. Even though that had nothing to do with my dad, it's my deep-rooted trauma with my dad that has made me feel like shit in this moment. And when you can take that wow moment, and really accept it for what it is and be like well, you know what that's that's just that's just is what it is and you like i said it's different for everybody it's diff it's different for everybody uh one of the, one of the things i have to do with my mother because like i said it wasn't a pl- it wasn't a pleasant conversation with my mother i didn't i to- i told my mother what fucked me up but it wasn't it, it wasn't like it was a pleasant conversation i'm not i'm not even saying you have to talk to your dad like i said it's different for everybody and yeah he has a, he has a circle of friends that tell him something different okay so i'm just saying when it comes to what i when it comes to what i went through i did it for me I went in there and I said I did it for me because, like I said, it, 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 I, I get mad when I feel like I'm weaker. I feel like things that I did what I did, but it's because I'm different. I handle things differently than probably how you'll handle them. But you don't have to live with it. It, it's one thing to feel like it. It's another thing to realize that you don't have to harbor it. And that, but here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. You're hitting the nail on the head, and this is why I'm telling you that you need to take that wow moment and realize that your dad issues are what fucked you up in this moment, because it's a combination of things. The things your dad put, like, like I said, you don't have to talk to your dad. I'm telling you what I did, but that doesn't have to be for you. People heal differently. You don't have to talk to your dad. You could, like, you can do what I did and just guillotine it and not talk to him. Whatever you need to do to keep your sanctuary. To keep you at peace. But you're hitting the nail on the head. That you're saying that your kids will never have to grow up. F- feeling the way you felt. You're already on that path. But to enhance that more for your kids. Take these moments to realize. These these are the things that your dad has done. That make you feel the way like you feel now. Because as you heal yourself. You'll, you'll learn to accept it more. One of the things that I've done to heal myself more is I've uh, my sister brought my, brought it to my attention, but we feel like that my mom has some mental issues that weren't addressed. And as I'm healing myself because I've harbored a lot of anger towards my mother because of the stuff that she put me through, I've started to realize that I feel more and more sad for her, actually. Because 
I'm starting to realize the shit that she went through that she projected on me. And I'm like, damn, this is why she did this to me. This is why she did this to me. And even though it was bullshit and she should have never have done it, I feel sorry for her because she's letting that trauma rule her life. But I'm not going to let it rule mine. She can keep that. And that's why I called her because that's how I handled it. Like I said, I left the bullshit that she put in my life with her because it wasn't my bullshit. It was hers. You went through some shit with the cop yesterday, and it triggered you because of some dad bullshit. You know what? Your dad can hold on to that bullshit. It's not you. You have your own life. You have your kids. They're not going to live the life that your dad put you through because you love them. You want to be there for them. It has not, your, your, the, the shit that your dad put you through has no place in your life. And so, that that's just that's just how I see it. You you're you're in the process of it, but part of getting there and enhancing it a bit more is understanding that the bullshit that's making you feel icky right now is dad bullshit. So you know what? Give it to your dad. And I don't mean like call him. I mean like inwardly. Like oh, this is dad bullshit. All right, you know what? It's not me. Accepting it, you're like oh, it's dad bullshit. That's why I feel the way I feel. It's because my dad did this to me. But you know what? I I need to move on. I can't. He's no longer. He no longer has that power over me. He is no longer a part of what I want to be. Or what I want to be for my kids. And what I want to have for them. So I won't make it a part of it. And the reason why I say address it to be able to do that is because unlike other people who don't try to address the generational trauma, they actually start projecting that onto their kids. And that's almost what happened to me. I think that my mom went through some trauma that probably she got from her own parents. It probably was generational trauma that got projected onto her but unfortunately she felt she became a victim of it and let it rule her life which eventually trickled down to her traumatizing me but nah fuck that it's not who i am it's not who i aspire to be and i may have spikes i may have lapses i may have moments where i'm like oh i feel icky all of a sudden but when i search myself and realize that it's 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 my mom issues i have this moment where i'm like oh shit that ain't me. It actually it, it has nothing to do with me. It's okay that I feel the way I feel. But in reality, it's not who I am. It's my mother bullshit. So you know what? I'm going to just leave it with the mother bullshit box. That's that's the way I see it. And I know it's different for everybody. I know I know I know it's different for everybody, and especially because like I said, I don't go through anxieties. It's not something I, I, I personally have. But I feel like there are some basic steps that a lot of people can take. And it's just a different growth pace for different people. So take it at the pace you need to go. You have One of the things I really enjoy is that you're able to verbalize them. You're, you're able to see them. And you also have a group of people that can help you too. And let you vent this stuff out. My dad said I was bipolar wasn't wasn't real. My mom was the one who stuck up for me. It's stuff like that. Like, I'm gonna be honest, and it, I guess, like, I guess it's just something that I realized. There are no adults. It's just kids raising kids, and it's helped me understand my mother more. Because my mother was a kid raising raising kids. And that's regardless of what her age was. I feel like she never got to the maturity level to be considered adult to properly raise a kid. And so it's more like should I harbor that anger and let it take the energy from me? Or should I just accept it for what it is and just be like damn. My mom went through some stuff, but she tried the best that she could. It wasn't the best mother. It wasn't the best thing for me. But you know what? I can't let it just have a place in my life anymore.
I'm gonna love her for who she is. Even though I don't talk to her, I, I wish my mom happy birthdays now. I do it from I do it for me though. I do it to heal me. Like I said, it's different for everybody, but I know who I am, and I know that for me, my mom was a a, a major anger point for me, and I don't want that. So instead of having anger towards her. I'm taking it upon myself to wish her happy birthdays, happy new years, all that kind of stuff because I need to heal for my own self. I'm doing it for me. These these are just things that I do. I don't know how because because traumas are 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 I feel like they're the background issue that a lot of people don't address. And then you have people who say they have traumas but they really don't. They don't, they don't know what true trauma is like. And so it becomes this nuanced topic where it's like people just don't want to help people or let them voice themselves. And so I don't know a direct way to help you because it's actually not a, 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 it's not a widely talked about issue. It really isn't. Uh, it, at the very least, the help you get is where people say go see a therapist. And I know you suggested that, Mama. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with going to see a therapist, but at the same time, th there, there's not enough good therapists. It, 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 one of the common problems with therapists is like, ah, just take this medication. Instead of dealing with the vocal part, letting people really come to terms with what has happened in their lives. Really helping them walk through their path. And I know it's a longer process, but it's very, it's a very important so I hope this helped redundant know that there's people in your back corner know that you got this honestly like I said it it, it, it struck a chord with you and it hit you and it made you low but none of it's true and we were able to figure out exactly what it was so we'll address it as such so keep moving forward pick yourself up from the bootstraps and just start walking that, that's 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 what's helped me with the whole just take it step by step because um, one of the things I found like with the whole step by step and then one of the things people like to say is you know I take 10 steps forward but get knocked 20 steps back for me it's just like alright even if that happens you'll never get where you're gonna get if you just don't continue to walk are you gonna stop because you got knocked 20 steps back I mean shit that sucks but you definitely won't get anywhere you're going to go if you just don't continue to walk. So just take it bit by bit. And that's right. You are a fucking warrior. You got this. I can't wait to start doing therapy streams specifically for that. This is this is this is what I want my stream to be. For straight up situations like this. Just like, hey, you want a time slot? You wanna be anonymous? I got you. Meet me on a Thursday at this time. I'll chime you in as anonymous. I'll call you uh waffles if you want. Voice yourself, talk about it. But I love you all. You got this. Light ring attack. Let's see what this is. Oh, yeah. We're, we're going to equip that. Which one did I have? No. I had strength of moving right. Alright.
What the hell? Okay, now it does. What the hell? Alright. Why, why won't it? Oh, because it's on cooldown. Never mind. Damn, I'm a big dumbass. Still not up? Okay. Now let's try it. There we go. Sure feels good. What happened to all the people who lived here? Follow the clues, boy. Right, right. Follow the clues. Okay, so there was an evil dwarf king, and he made all these people hunt monsters. The people put them in cages, and then... And then I don't know. Hmm. We are missing a clue. Back inside the castle? No. There is nothing more for us inside. But stay alert for chain dragons, boy. Perhaps you'll uncover more about this dwarf king. <laughs> You're fine, redundant. Take care of your family. I hope we were able to help you. You know, you got this, okay? I don't I don't have much more to say. Honestly, I think this is just the healing part. Uh just take care. You got this. Atreus, follow me.
what it is, redundant. Get ready for your stream. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm glad to have met you. And you know, I, I talk to you, I talk to myself. So just take it easy. <laughs> ain't much, like literally, ain't much more I can say. Opens the gate. But I feel like I'm missing something. What the hell am I missing?
you welcome back. Going in or what? I ain't doing much, Mama. Redundant's getting ready for her stream. Just encouraging words all around. Hey, bro. You ever hear of a dwarf king? I suppose you're talking about. What the hell are you apologizing for, Mama? Some bitch ruled over the humans once lived in this area. <laughs> Built himself a castle just north of you. A dwarven castle? What's it like? You got yourself a pair of eyes and legs, ain't you? Might want to stock up before you head that way, though. Old Moltsignir is known for collecting all manner of killering creatures. Not sure who's looking after them now. Better not be fighting with your brother again. Just because he's gotten a little less annoying over the years doesn't mean I ain't got a customer base of my own to keep happy. Much love, oh, yeah? Who's that? Well, you came back here, didn't you? Fair point. <laughs> Come on in, man. So much for peace and quiet. Slow down time. That's what you mean after being hit. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll come back to those. Well, see you okay. next time you need something. Let's get you all bum fuzzled over there. Get going! Tell me about that giant lady with the bow. She was called Skadi, Queen of the Hunt. Her father was Thiotsi, who could take the shape of any wild creature and taught Skadi how to hunt them all. From the ribs of pack beasts, she fashioned second feet, allowing her to glide upon the snow so no animal could evade her. She became a huntress beyond compare, even to any god. Odin himself wanted her for his bride believing she would bear him strong sons. But she spurned his affections, and for that insult, Odin vowed revenge. It was put forth that the Aesir were plagued by an eagle who would steal the precious golden apples of Idu. Not even the finest archer among the gods could bring it down. Odin knew that Skadi could not resist the temptation to prove herself superior, and so she joined the hunt. Skadi tracked the eagle as it flew where she alone could glide, and loosed an arrow from her unerring bow. When she collected her quarry, she found no eagle at all. But her own father, poor Theotzi, slain by his own daughter. She was overcome with grief and shame, for there is nothing nature so reviles as a child who kills their parent. Skadi succumbed to her fate as winter's blanket fell. Holding her father as the mountain held her in an embrace to last eternity. Well, that was sad. Aye. There aren't many happy endings for the giants, I'm afraid.
You too, Mama. Take care of yourself. You the statue? And thank you for stopping by and encouraging Redundant as well. I really appreciate the support you gave. The statue stands no longer, Spirit. Then my bond to this realm is severed. And I am off to find the real God of Thunder. He will know retribution. My deepest credit. Off he goes. Brave God. Want to look for Thor on his own. He is a fool. What did the spirit leave us? An offering to one of the gods. Can we use it? No, but perhaps the dwarves can. Damn, Kratos got a big foot. down there you can beach over here Son of a bitch.
stomach damage. There's something up there. Oh, wow. It must have what he talking about?
wonder ye. Hey, Brock. You found oh, something boy. interesting. Did you now? Well, color me interested. Tear would have been pleased as peaches knowing these offerings were being turned to armor. Did you know him? What was he like? Never you mind, boy. Tear's dead. Best not to dig up the past. The dwarf speaks wisely. For once. Sure, I'm open. What the hell? You doing all right tonight, Nergi? Or are you just stopping in and hopping back out? Did you have a good time racing? Nobody's twisting your arm. Deja vu. I've never been to this place before. You two going in or what?
Thursday night, double cheeked up. Kick. Oh. Kick all these chains.
I think this is the last one. Might as well, right? Fine. Gavagia. Prepare yourself! Know what the rock is cooking. I must speak with you. What's wrong? I came to this lake with a group of tradesmen, seeking refuge from the desolation. But how could you know it was even worse at the Lake of Nine? We cannot undo your mistake, Spirit. I know that. But I fear for my captain and crew. I believe they are still under the water. Will you find them for me? Is there anything you can offer us in return? I... I have little to offer. Oh. Well, I'm not sure... Wait! I died wearing a valuable family heirloom. It's yours, if you promise to find my crew. Deal. Thank you. You are learning. Why didn't your mom ever tell me about the desolation? I won't speak for your mother, but it was never my concern, nor should it be yours. Doesn't it concern us if everything around us is dying? Our only concern is going home. Really? Then why are we exploring all these islands? The resources we find improve our equipment. If we stray from the path, it is only to prepare ourselves for the journey ahead. I can live with that if it means we keep exploring. And helping others. <laughs> down there. Fuck me.
those totems here. It's because they rotate. Oh, son of a bitch. Okay. H, a D and R, okay. That's what I need.
Bid you all a good night. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching my stream. You all have a good one.